the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Yes, we are still in the Easter season. Probably many people have forgotten about this particular time of the church year where Christ has risen from the dead and we're supposed to celebrate. People have moved on with their lives, but God is still God and love is still love. And we're going to keep taking care of you because that is what God has commissioned us to do. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries in beautiful St. Patrick's Church, let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, to one have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was a great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may by themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than it will be of God that for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous, for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains in you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal him, myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During the Mass as I celebrate, there are individuals who sit in the pews that really sustain me in the life of faith. Sometimes I need to see that example of faith to sustain me and what I am trying to do and how I'm trying to live. And when you see that spirit lived in others, you know, I talk to wedding couples about this spirit that exists between them. You can't see this love necessarily passing through one person to another but you can see it through visible signs like holding hands or gazing each other's eyes or walking together and doing things together. In the most sacred of ways, you know that spirit exists. You can't necessarily see it passing back and forth, but you know it's there because of what is in each person's heart and what unites them together. I look at people in my pews that pray for all of you, that pray for the sick and the dead and for vocations. I see people who are struggling in their lives, who are asking the Spirit to lead them and guide them. And we all have our struggles. We all have demons that we have to address in our life. You know and I know that the cunning, the deceitful, those evil spirits exist in the world because they want to bring us down. But if we have the Holy Spirit strengthening us, I know it's not easy. It's always difficult, especially in the sixth week of Easter when most people have pretty much gone by the wayside and have forgotten about Easter Sunday and have forgotten about life. You know, God is God and God wants to love us and God wants to sustain us. And there are people out there that really need the love of God. And every time I have a house blessing or I need to do an anointing or somebody has asked for a pastoral visit, you know that there are people that are seeking God's love. And that really sustains me, knowing that because of you, 
and because of your needs that God can work through me to take care of you. The second part of the Easter season leads us towards the Holy Spirit, leads us towards this gift that's within each of us that wants to unite us and wants to bind us. The world, the way it is, is no different in some ways than 2,000 years ago. I keep going to that 18th chapter of John where Jesus says, this is not my world. If this were my world, people would stand up and defend me. But as it is, this is not my world. And yet, God still, in that gospel of John, gives us the Holy Spirit because God does not give up on us even when we give up on God. Our second reading from St. Peter, that is a testimony to those who want to enter the faith, kind of like a catechetical instruction for those who enter the faith of what we need to do to get to heaven. It's something that has to be perpetual in our lives. It's hard work. Liturgy is the work of the church. And a lot of times, people do not want to do this work. It is hard. It is hard to build a relationship with God. It is hard to build a relationship with anyone. Talk to a married couple. Ask them how hard it is to keep that relationship going. 10% love, 90% hard work. It's work. That's what liturgy is. That's what prayer is. And a lot of people just don't want to do it. They'd rather be sucked up in the ways of the world. And when the world corrodes, so do they. But with God, if we keep on keeping on, if we allow that spirit to lead us and guide us, despite the way the world is, we can find hope. I think of people like June Downey, who comes here every single mass, every single service, to pray for the sick, to pray for the needy, to pray for vocations. I pray for people like Joe Krause, who during good times and bad, has not forgotten about God and keeps giving me words of inspiration on how to live. I pray with people like Cookie Schrader. I pray for people like Rini Butts, who very much has that spirit in her. And despite the difficulties we have with our families and friends and those things that we have to address in our daily life, they have not forgotten about God. So many people in our border town parishes, they struggle they persevere, they allow the spirit to guide them and good things happen. You give me strength, you give me courage. And you know, I've been fighting those battles with uh, protecting children for 26 years as a Catholic priest, trying to defend those who do not get defended very well by other people. I have been called dead to the diocese. I have been called dead to others because of what I've done. That's the price you pay for living the gospel message. The Pope once said, if you have a problem with your leaders, be a man about it, but prepare to take the consequences. The spirit must be the one that guides us and leads us. And no matter what happens in the world, if we allow God to be the source and summit of all we do, then come what may, God knows what's in our hearts. The spirit knows what our hearts. The spirit lives within our hearts. And that's what gives us hope. On this sixth Sunday of Easter, God has not forgotten about you. I try not to forget about you. That's why we keep celebrating these online masses. The numbers are dwindling, but the faith is still the same. God is God. God loves you, and we will keep serving you. No matter who you are, there are so many out in this community who I have not mentioned who have sustained me, whether they're from Wichita, Kansas, or from Phoenix, Arizona, or from uh, New York, uh, Buffalo, New York. People are on the other side of the pond from Italy and from Poland who have been watching these masses and who have been telling me that they need that strength to keep on. Please know I'll do what I can. Please do what you can. Please let's remember that it's always about the spirit. It's always about that hard work that starts and ends what we do right here. I will keep celebrating these masses as long as I have the strength. You keep doing your part. Support your local parishes. Support each other. Allow the spirit to unite us and guide us and let us share that spirit and that love with the people that we meet. This is our prayer.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Committed to keeping on going as Christ has done for us, let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray for those who are called to serve in the church, to lead in the church, that they may be good shepherds, good stewards of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our students preparing for their first communions, that God may continue to bless them and teach them the importance of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents in the homes not take this faith for granted by sharing it and living it with their children and their children's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the parishioners of St. Patrick's and St. Anne's Camino y Esperanza, and all those in the border town community, that we continue to bless them and for the benefactors who have supported us, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and those in need of God's healing presence, especially those on our parish's sick lists, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and petitions we have offered this last week, that God may embrace them and their families. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, you have never forgotten about us. May we never forget about you. May you continue to guide us and lead us and nourish us with your word and sacrament. Through Christ, our Lord, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me, cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with sacrificial offerings so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord.
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer to each other that sign of peace. Agnustei, quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnustei, quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnustei, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, so before we do anything else, we want to offer a welcome back and bienvenidos to Emma Elvier, our parish secretary who on Ash Wednesday broke both ankles on the job. We had a little trouble with the mothership getting her help with insurance, but uh, St. Mary's Hospital was able to get her through workers' compensation. She's in the healing process. She's working in both parishes. And she is essential to our parish. You know, during COVID, we talked about who was essential and who was not. 
The government has their standards and we have ours. What Emma has done to help us build our Hispanic communities and everyone in the area has been absolutely espectacular. Perhaps you might want to give her a call this week at either of the parishes. She works Monday and Tuesdays at Ann's from 9 to 3, Wednesdays and Thursdays at St. Patrick's from 9 to 3. Perhaps you can give her a call or a kind word just to tell her how much we care about her. There are good things that have happened at both of our parishes that we really do need to acknowledge. At St. Anne's, we have been forced to celebrate our weekday masses outdoors, even when the weather is a little bit cold, because on the inside of the church, we have begun the painting process, the renovations of the church, from the gutters to the roofing to the shingles to the boilers that we have repaired, is now going into the inside of the church with the painting and the carpeting and all those wonderful things that we need to do in order to upgrade the church for the next generation. If we take care of what we have, if we do our part in this generation, it paves the way for the next. With a $13,000 state-of-the-art outdoor sound system to an $11,000 state-of-the-art indoor camera system, We've upgraded our sound system inside the church. We've put new LED lights in our church and in our hall. We have done what has been necessary to protect and preserve St. Anne's Church in preparation for the novena that's coming up and all these recorded masses that we would like to offer you inside the church as well as inside this beautiful chapel. We're going to take care of you and we want to take care of this community because it's the first shrine of the United States. It may not be recognized by the bishops, but it certainly is recognized by the people who founded this city and have brought that relic to save and heal scores of people over the last 150 years. Over at St. Patrick's, in this little newspaper called the Moments Progress Reporter, there was a beautiful article on May 3rd that I wanted to share with you because what happened at St. Pat's is kind of a testimony to what I'm going to preach on the Holy Trinity Mass, and I certainly want to share with you. This is what uh, our friends Anita at the Progress Reporter wrote about uh, the people of St. Patrick's Church and all who have supported it and what we've been trying to do at both parishes. This is what she wrote. Sometimes help comes in the form that is not expected. St. Patrick's Church has been working on updating, improving the gymnasium for quite a while now. The costs for all these updates and repairs needed were pretty steep. They were given a price of $60,000 just to replace the roof of the church. While celebrating Latin Masses in Manuka, God love the poor Clares and the Latin Masses in Manuka, Father Pete Jankowski met a gentleman named Nick Skokna. Nick seems to be well-connected and willing to help where is needed. Nick made it possible to deliver over 200 cases of chips to the needy of the Kankakee County area, which is worth about $10,000 or so. Actually, in reality, I rented two U-Haul trucks at a cost of, what, $300 for both of them total, plus gasoline, to get 400 cases of chips for the needy in the area, which was worth about $20,000. None of this food is sold. All of it is distributed to the needy. Nick was instrumental in finding a plumber that did all the plumbing work in the gymnasium bathrooms. That was a $75,000 job that was done for nothing. Last Thursday, Nick Skogna, 188 cases, it was actually 198, of Carl Buttig sliced salami was distributed to the local food pantries in Mements, St. Anne, Martinton, to local schools, Good Shepherd Manor, the Camino Esperanza Retreat House on Wichard Road, also the Retreat House in Pembroke Township, and the other needy in the area. I looked it up. Uh, that kind of salami runs about $7 a pound retail times 5,000 pounds of salami received. If my math is correct, that's $35,000 of salami that we distributed in an hour. The food distribution is not directly helping the updates be getting done, but indirectly, many who hear of the good works or who may have received some of the donated food and have the skills to complete some of the renovations do so for a reduced cost or for free, as thanks for the charitable work being done in the church. 
If you have not driven by St. Patrick's Gymnasium on Hill Street, now would be a good time to see the beautiful new windows that were installed. The gymnasium is so much more to the Moments area. It is a meeting place, community center, emergency shelter, and the list goes on. The renovations are needed and any and all help is appreciated. When I preach the Mass on Trinity Sunday, I will reference this article from the Progress Reporter. If we do our part, if all of us do it together, great things can happen on the east end of Kankakee County. As other churches are being closed, our churches are starting to grow. Our churches are getting young. Our churches are welcoming families. The weekend I preach this, I'm going to the Pembroke Township because what's happening is a lot of Hispanic families are moving in, buying these rancheros, and they're uh, upgrading the facilities, and they want the sacraments for their kids, which is where St. Anne's and St. Patrick's does its part. Please know we're here for you. We're here for anybody. We want to take care of all of you, and you've all been wonderful in fulfilling the prophecy of Taylor Marshall. If the church ain't crying, it's dying. Our churches are crying a lot. A lot of kids coming in. And that's a good sign for the future. Keep praying for us. Keep supporting us. Keep doing what you can. We'll do our part to allow these communities to grow so that these parishes can persevere in the future. God bless. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, who by his redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>